Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Join News today. We're live on DSTV Channel 4 to 1, Go TV Channel 1 to 5, across all our social media handles. We're Join News on TV. Coming up, Vice President Dr. Ramadou Baumia pushes for Africa to pursue a continental mobile money interoperability. Also in this bulletin, Dr. Marty Opoku Prempe endorsed by the governing New Patriotic Party to be Dr. Mahmoud Obamia's running mate. And also in this bulletin, Wayek worried as exams candidates now resort to inserting money and contacts of their parents in their answer booklets to bribe examiners. We have business, sports and showbiz also in this package. Do stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. I am Faustina Safo. Now we start with Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamia. He is asking African leaders to pursue a continental mobile money interoperability system. He believes a continent-wide digital payment system will not only improve intra-African trade, but also promote financial inclusion and formalize businesses on the continent. Dr. Bamia, who was addressing the African Prosperity Network in Africa Friday morning, argued that there will be no need to continue with a hunt for a common currency if the bloc succeeds in rolling out an efficient continent-wide mobile money interoperability. Let's go live and speak to my colleague Latif Idris, who is on the ground now. Latif, what else has he been saying? Yeah, so for the, you know, we can all testify that in Ghana today, mm. uh, by the leadership of the vice president, the, the country has successfully implemented the mobile money interoperability. Uh, so that's the basis on which the Vice President built his argument here at the African Prosperity Network uh, to make the point that over the years, decades, it's been decades of a hand for a single currency for Africa, and that mm -hmm. has not been realized as we speak. And so he's floating the idea that just maybe it's time for the entire continent to emulate the Ghanaian example by fully implementing a continental level mobile money interoperability. If successful, according to the vice president, it will go a long way to improve intra-African trade and also do away with a lot of informal businesses on the continent. And with that, we'll be heading closer to the macroeconomic that we all are looking forward to on the African continent. Mm. And so if that is successful, then we will not need to proceed on looking for a single currency because you could be in Ghana and still be able to transfer money to someone in, say, Cote d'Ivoire to do business with a person. With that, we are improving on intra-African trade and also single currency will no longer be an issue to pursue as, as a continent. Thank you, Latif Idrisu. Let's do some politics now. Dr. Marty Opoku Prempe has been endorsed as running mate for the governing New Patriotic Party's flag bearer, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, making Dr. and Dr. versus Jane and John a contest to look forward to in the upcoming general elections. Well, in this piece, we'll tell you more about the man's popularity and why he is referred to as Napo. Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia looks better than John Dramat Mahama. Of all, all economic history and everything, um, um, Dr. Mahmoud Bavia stands head and shoulders over John Ramani Mahama. Uh, so 2024 is a done deal for the MPP. 2024 will be a done deal for MPP. Born 
and bred in Menshia Apejefie in Kumase, young Nanapoku attended Prempe College for his O and A level before pursuing further studies at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, where he earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Human Biology. Before delving into active politics, he practiced as a medical doctor, demonstrating commitment to healthcare provision. Dr. Opoku Prempe, popularly known as Napo, was first elected to Parliament in 2008 to represent the Mensha constituency and later Mensha South, holding on to the seat till now. Nana Kwabna Mensa is a Pejefi Asafohini, Napo's royal family. Napo Pejefi, Yani Pepefia, Yetitino, Manin Yinia, the school cum, Libri Pia Pejefi, no Tia Kopimse, Yame Boye, or graduating in the school. Bibia, uh, a doctorate degree, a hair no core medicine or tech, and Sana or core abruptly. The Apetefia is his father's home where he was born and lived throughout his days in busy school to the university, even before moving to study abroad. Ojo, Papa, Papa, or Breno Wase, the Soriano Pa. No Jaria Nadisia Nasa in school, Nana and he was one say, Obey ready na Nina, Nana Drua, when you're Coco Mom no more, na Bibi Mumudia. He has been a calm and humble child since childhood. He was focused on school and studies. He has always been indoors studying and he took everything seriously. He is a prince because he was born to a king. According to Nana Kwabena Mensa, Dr. Opoku Prempe's confirmation as Dr. Baumia's running mate has brought joy to the family. Until you are politics, Mono, and your dear, a higher Bussian or cry, a bumpire man of pass, a radi, bet one or so, no dinner quack with Drew Baby. Until, sir, his aim is to be a politician and move to greater heights, and the family has always embraced this decision with prayers. For us, we are happy about the selection as running meat to Dr. Baumia. We are praying for God's protection. This is an exciting news. We are praying for God's protection. This is an exciting news. The Ashanti region has become critical to the MPP's success in the December polls due to its large voting population. The party believes its chances in the region is bolstered by the selection of Dr. Opoku Prempe as running mate. Naming Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe as running mate also solidifies the MPP's connections with key demographics within the area, potentially swaying votes in the party's favor come December. I think you have to compare your mama with Nanado, not Balmia. Uh, we are looking at the, both of them coming up against each other in the December 7th general elections. If you can only, comp you can only compare John Draman in Mahama and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia as vice president, because both of them have occupied that position as vice president. And I think uh, the comparison is tilted in the favor of Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. However, critics argue the choice of Dr. Matthew Pukuprempe may not satisfy demands for equitable representation across the regions. For Joy News, my name is Nana Bwachi Dankwe Yadom Kumasi. Are you ready to wear your flags? Are you ready? Well, let's stay with politics. Since its inception in 
eight years, about eight years ago, the free assertions policy has been one filled with a lot of controversy. While some believe the policy is good and must be maintained, others strongly kick against it. They stand on the fact that it must be reviewed or better yet still abolished for not serving the nation as promised. Lois Jolade-Yemi has been engaged in first-time voters who are beneficiaries of the free SHS policy on their personal experiences and the impact on students, teachers and the overall educational system of Ghana. You, what have your experiences been? Yes, yeah, so at least it reduced the level of illiteracy in our communities mm -hmm. because the less privileged had the opportunities to go to school and at least have some level of education. Mm -hmm. So I can say in that aspect it has helped us a lot because even at school most people weren't able to afford provisions or any other things but because of that they came to school and had whatever they wanted to have even though some were wayward mm -hmm. but at least they helped in that way. Help that's yeah. okay. I heard some school, the school fees is very expensive. Mm. And from the family I'm coming from, I see now, nah, mm. if there were school fees, there will not be no hope. But because of free HS, there was hope and I completed. So as for free HS, it was good for me. Yes, I see you shaking your head. Do you agree? Was it, it the same with you? It wasn't. It was free HS, but it wasn't free. Okay. Because they said free HS, but they asked us to pay classes fee, which oh. was fun rest of this. Wow. Yeah, but. I completed SHS and went to check my result and it was blocked. Why? They said I was owing almost 1,000 sure in the school, so I have to pay before they release my result. L lack of food. Let's take it. We are like 100 and something. We came to the dining. Mm. Uh -huh. But some will eat. Some will eat. Mm. There are some days, special days. Mm. Everyone is there watching the shit on. Why? Suddenly, you get my 200. Hey. Sad time, the day students in your baby DB. But when it comes like beans, no. Ah, that, that one, yeah, me and the beans, yeah. You are <laughs> dying, you are dying. <laughs> Is it that the prospectors didn't have the things you needed to bring and you weren't really aware? Wendy, I'm coming straight to you because I can hear you saying a big no. When we came to school, the first we came to school, they gave us this one, um, list. Mine is about 66 list. Of, 66? Yeah, you should buy cooking pot, stove, cylinder, blender. And the rest of things. So we, every week I spend around like 500 cities every week. Wow. This week I have practical. I see. Last. It has to be maintained so that it will release the burden of maybe financial purposes on the parents and also like not for free education. Many of us wouldn't be able to go to school. Mm. And so it has to be maintained and reviewed. At equipment, they should see because it's free, the students are now plenty coming. So if they, they see that maybe they can't afford for the practical staff, they should know maybe the shadow they will do for the practical stuff for the students. So they will also get a chance to get the same time as other people do. Not some people will get the chance to do and others won't get the same chance to do. So as for me, they should review it and check it or and bring it up again. Abolished in a way that I feel if um, people are able to pay fees and come to learn, they will take studies more serious. Because during the free SHS, it's like, uh, they felt it was free, so they came to misbehave. Okay. Some came and just wanted to pass through the school. But I'm thinking if um, it's abolished and people pay fees, at least it will bring um, a better education system. Let's head now to Parliament because the minority has blocked a request by the majority leader Alexander Feyomarkin to expedite the confirmation hearing and approval of Minister of State designate Herbert Krampa. President Kufado, we know, nominated the Deputy Energy Minister to a Minister of State at the Energy Ministry only last Tuesday. The majority leader requested the House fast track some of the processes in place for the vetting and conduct the vetting today, but the minority will have none of that. Let's take you to Parliament now and speak to my colleague Kweku Asante, he's our Parliamentary Affairs correspondent. Kweku, why did the minority oppose this request? If you look at the standing order, the standing mm -hmm. order provides for instance, and among others, when it comes to vetting of ministerial nominees, there has to be the publication in the dailies for at least two weeks. In fact, all those processes would have to be followed religiously before the ministerial nominee is vetted. And that was the appeal to that the majority that did make on the floor that that processes must all be expedited so that Herbert Crapper can have his day and become the energy minister or minister of state at the energy ministry. We understand the strategy is that the energy minister, Matthew Kukukwepe, having been announced publicly as the running mate to the MPP flag bearer, will in the coming days or weeks tender in his resignation to focus on the campaign 
leading to the 2024 election. That is why the majority side would want to get at least a minister of state in place at the energy ministry before this uh, resolution takes place. But the major minority say, as of now, the energy minister has not resigned. Matthew Poku Pepe is still energy minister. The ministry has still has two deputies. They do not see any urgency for which reason the house must expedite all these processes. And that is why they blocked it. And so today, contrary to the expectation that the, the, the vetting of Herbert Kappa would have come up, it hasn't come up. In fact, no advertisement has even been made as to whether or not this vetting will take place as soon as next week or not. So that is a challenge for the majority, and they have to deal with it. Mm. What else is the House considering today? Well, the House just presented a business to them for the ensuing week, but the bigger issue is that the Minister for Interior, Henry Cortin, is coming on the front. In fact, I've seen it in chamber. It's about to answer questions on Officer Blackwell's allegations that the prison services lands are being sold to certain private individuals, particularly persons in government. And so that question has been scheduled. It has been advertised on the other department. They put that right after the business statement and the consent shared by members of parliament, that question will be asked and the minister will be expected to provide a response. Mm. Thank you so much, Miku Asante, our parliamentary affairs correspondent. Now let's do some other stories now. The West African Examination Council, WIEC, has discovered a new strategy of examination while practiced by candidates who sit for the examinations. Now candidates in their new modus operandi of cheating have now resorted to inserting contacts of their parents with money stashed in their answer booklets. Well, according to WAIC, this approach aims to induce and compromise examiners to award them undeserving grades. Listen to Head of Corporate Affairs at WAIC, John Kapi. A caution to all candidates and all examination officials, invigilators, supervisors, um, you know, even security personnel, drivers, all involved in this year's BC examinations. The caution is that please focus on your work professionally, do your work as your contribution to nation building, and know that the, once you abide by the rules and regulations governing your portion of the work that will make this year's BEC uh, conducted smoothly, you are in good business. But then the caution is that anything short of this uh, will land you at the wrong side of the law. You can be assured that uh, from the police through NIB to other national security personnel, um, the council is poised wide awake uh, to apprehend and make sure that you are prosecuted if you are found culpable in terms of doing anything that will, um, you know, draw down the integrity of this year's BEC. Mr. Brew, can you run us down uh, through the figures that you have, the um, cases that you had, had from 2023, were they related to only BEC or the WASI was part of it? How many have been convicted and how many cases are still under investigations? Right, surely we have some cases from the WAS, but for purposes of uh, this media briefing, I would like for us to focus on the BEC and right from 2023 as we indicated earlier we have had 19 cases recorded now recorded does not mean that there were only 19 uh, you know incidents but to say that out of all the incidents the ones that were seen to have been legally ripe for investigation further investigations and uh, for the court processes to be triggered uh, you know, were 19 recorded. Now, out of it, a total number of 13 still under investigations, as I said, because then, you know, the police will have to do their work and make sure that um, from their perspective, what we call a prima facie case has been made and, and, and that all the evidence, uh, you know, relevant evidence are well documented for prosecution. But to say that, I'm glad to say that six of uh, these cases are in court, wherefore, uh, in terms of uh, uh, those who were found or suspected to have been involved in examination pra malpractice, four have uh, been convicted and two hearings are ongoing, yes, as of um, 4 July 2024.
Well, that's rather the head of legal affairs at WIAC, Victor Brew. Now, let's do some other stories now. Senior presidential advisor Yao Safumavo has called on stakeholders in the educational sector to ensure the quality of Ghana's education system is improved to solve most of the country's problems. Speaking at the International Educators Summit 2024 in Accra, the former education minister questioned why flooding, poor sanitation practices continue to wreak havoc on the country when there are educated people in Ghana whose specialities are to find solutions to such problems. Let's go on the phone now and speak to Kenneth Jesse. He's on the ground. He's been uh, monitoring the situation and he's, at been, he's been at this event. Kenneth, thank you for your time here on Joe News today. What else has he been saying? Well, uh, he's been making some uh, comparisons that, uh, for example, uh, we are often hearing about school roofing uh, being ripped off whenever it rains, as we see uh, the likes of residential buildings standing first. He mm -hmm. does not understand why we have so many educated people in the country who are supposed to be specialized in some of these problems solving uh, you know, things, but they are not able to do that. And the quality of our education has been called into question because if we still experience perennial flooding, sanitation problems in 2024, when we have people who are specialized in such fields not being able to solve it, then it appears that there is no, not much importance attached to the mm. quality of education that is turned out. And also the education minister, uh, Dr. Our mission also, you know, doubt that government uh, rolling out of them schools that some of them are going to be completed at the end of September and October, and also the distribution of the laptops are also going to be done. They are going to, you know, uh, you are aware that the the one laptop, one student policy, distributing laptops to students in public schools across the country. So say that one is also going to continue as well. Mm. Thank you, Kenneth. Now let's do some other stories. Habits formed in childhood can last a lifetime. Unfortunately, once these lifestyle patterns are set, they can be quite difficult to change. Educating children about healthy eating reduces the exposure to non-communicable diseases, which is the leading cause of death in Ghana. Emmanuel Jivenu brings you the story of two young friends from Taifa, St. Dominic RC Basic School, who are discovering the importance of making healthier food choices, thanks to hope for future generations. Break time, please. Pupils of Taifa St. Dominic RC Basic School eagerly rush out of their classroom. Excited for a brief escape, from their studies. I enjoy today's class. Sedinam Kalan and her best friend, Gloria Boatima, go to the eateries every break to buy food together. I'm going to buy fried rice and maybe some carbonated drinks. Their choice of food is often junk and carbonated drinks. It is a routine they enjoy, but little do they know the potential risks they are exposing themselves to. While these meals are tasty, they could be leading them down a path towards non-communicable diseases like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease and cancer, just to name but a few. Although NCDs are more prevalent in adults, the foundation for these diseases can be laid during childhood through exposure to risk factors such as poor diet. As Sedanam and Gloria head back from the eateries, they stumble upon some volunteers teaching pupils how to prepare simple, healthy meals like salad. I have my leg feels like this, okay? I can just decide to tell them like this for my salad. Coordinator for the Preventing NCDs Among Guinean Children Project, Emanuela Kwame, explains the inspiration behind this initiative. NCDs are the leading cause of about 45% of all deaths in Ghana and 41% of deaths among the youth in Ghana. We need to focus our attention on preventing NCDs and it is good that we can start with the young ones because people form their habits at very young ages. If we start now, we are assured that they can grow into responsible adults. Headmistress Christiana 
Efua Achumboro believes the initiative is transformative. It not only impacts the pupils, but also extends to their families. We are putting this into the children. They grow up with it. They know what the risks involved in it. As of now, as we are taking them through, they will be selected in whatever they eat. They will know that this one, if I continue to consume it and consume it, if I grow up, this is what will happen to me. Early awareness and prevention can lead to healthier lifestyle choices. Sedinam and Gloria make a resolution. I am going to put a stop to eating a lot of junk foods like fried rice and carbonated drinks. And I will eat a lot of fruits and vegetables to stay healthy. I also urge my friends, my families and my siblings to also eat a lot of fruits and vegetables to also keep them healthy and exercise daily. With newfound knowledge, Sedenham, Gloria and the hundreds of Taifa St. Dominic RC basic pupils can embark on a journey towards healthier living. Emmanuel Jivanu, Joy Prime. As successive governments make conscious efforts to expand the country's healthcare system, the services of professionals, including diagnostic medical scenographers and medical radiographers, would be in demand. But training of these allied health professionals is coming at a cost. Private institutions in this space are asking government for tax incentives and soft loans. Founder of Clean Taps College of Health and Allied Services Sciences, Professor Philip disclosed this when Casona Global Imaging Limited donated ultrasound equipment to schools at Clago. There's more in the following report. Allied health professionals are an integral part of healthcare delivery. Training of such professionals, including diagnostic medical sonographers and medical radiographers, is said to come at a cost, currently taking a toll on private institutions which are into allied health with cost of equipment being chief among contributory factors. To ensure the private sector is able to help in training qualified professionals, founder of Clintops College of Health and Allied Sciences, Professor Flip Nigoleku, is asking for a helping hand from government. Receiving the ultrasound equipment at Clagon in the Thema West municipality, he says, private institutions can train more professionals when they are able to access soft loans and tax waivers. Yes, so um, the support can come in varied ways um, in terms of tax incentives, in terms of, uh, you know, very much incentivized um, loan packages with low, you know, low interest rates and so on. Even with uh, maybe a vehicle, a bus or something to support the institution. So. For that, um, the government is fully aware that they can do a lot to support us. And so if uh, that comes, we, we, we will be very, very grateful. Professor Philip Nigoleku encouraged government to help private sector players. He added that the role of allied health professionals will be critical in government's Agenda 111 health policy. But I think it can be a shared relationship where government should look at some of us who have dedicated ourselves to the training of these health professionals, especially in the face of anticipated more um, health um, institution hospitals. The government to, took a bold step to um, implement the Agenda 111 um, uh, oh. program and this means that they were anticipated to build about 111 district hospitals. Even if uh, a few are completed, it's going to take a effort to be able to get the requisite professionals to work in the institutions. Meanwhile, sales lead for Casona Global Imaging Limited, Gladys Tete says such equipment will help the school in training the students. According to her, the company's support is not limited to only private institutions. It's to support and push those who are already doing the good work. 
and we believe that Clean Taps is doing a very good job. Being one of the private universities in uh, allied sciences, we think that we need to give them the necessary push that would uh, lead them to where they are trying to go to. We know and we, we can see that Clean Taps is on a mission to do great things and definitely we want to be part of this great story and that's why today we decided that uh, in support of their mission to have an extra ultrasound machine we decided to donate one of our own portable equipment from MyDre. So this is a, a step in the right direction, that's what I would say. And as long as we are in this country, Ghana, operating, we know that our support knows no bounds. We're willing to support any institution that uh, aligns with our mission and our vision. Kasona Global Imaging Limited says, supplying such equipment in the country is to ensure quality health solutions. And watching Joe News today, we'll be back with business to stay tuned in. Now it's not time for business here on Joe News today. My name is Winston Taki, and now to a first business story. The Ghana Cocoa Board has described as traveling the hoarding of cocoa beans by some cocoa farmers to private buyers in anticipation of an increase in the farm gate price. The Ghana increased the farm gate price paid to cocoa farmers by 26.26% to 33,120 Ghana cities per ton for the 2023-2024 crop season this year. Chief Executive Officer for Cocoa Board, Joseph Wain Edus, said the challenge still persists affecting the export of cocoa beans. He spoke to Joy Business after a visit to some cocoa grain communities in the central region. We have introduced the, uh, the, the slasher machine and it was purposed to deal that to address the problem of weedicide. We are encouraging the farmers to resort to the use of the slasher machine. You know, it has a dual purpose. The same machine can be used for weeding. It can also be, be used for pruning. We are urging the farmers to use the slasher machine. It's even less costly to use it. We did some little calculation here. Using UDCIS, whereas using UDCIS can cost you uh, about 300 Ghana CDs, you know, per acre. If you're using the slasher machine, it will cost you less than 100 CDs per acre. So it's better to use that one and then save the environment, save your soil, save the cocoa trees, and then also save human health. And I think that's the way we have to go. Quick one, what is the challenge with respect to the prosecution of these smugglers and those holding? That one, I think, uh, it has to do with the courts. Because a lot of arrests have been made. But I think apart from, is it Udmasi courts that have prosecuted a number of, uh, uh, you know, uh, suspects. All the other courts, we haven't seen any um, just conclusion of the uh, process, the court process, and we will want to, um, you know, plead that uh, most of these cases are actually, you know, uh, prosecuted to the to the to the conclusion. Now, away from that Greek sector, Chief Enterprise Business Office of MTN, Angela Mensah Puku, is urging micro, small, and medium businesses to leverage digital solutions to boost growth. According to her, building capacities of SMEs while capitalizing on their potential of technology will ensure the growth of the economy. She spoke to Joy Business at the launch of MTN Ghana's SME Month, which focuses on building a better, smarter, and faster businesses. MTN Ghana's SME Month, slated for July, aims to equip SMEs with the necessary tools and opportunities to succeed in a digital economy. This initiative demonstrates MTN's dedication to promoting digital and financial inclusion among SMEs, acknowledging their crucial role in driving economic growth. The program will feature training sessions, a sensitization forum for women-led businesses, and SME fairs. Angela Mensapuku, Chief Enterprise Business Officer at MTN, elaborated on the rationale behind a month-long program packed with activities. We're focusing on how to get our 
businesses ready for the future. Not only digital services, but capacity building with our partners and also how to access funding and also access to market. So when you look at the outcomes for this month, our month is to attract new customers, to make sure that we satisfy our customers that are currently with us, also see our customers move from good to great. The head of SME at MTN Ghana, Abu Bakar Siddiq Mohammed, shared some of the programs to be carried out during the period. The first are usually activities or the events that we organize for our SMEs so that they come patronize the fairs for them to showcase what the kind of things that they do, how they are helping the Guardian um, economy. And even within the fairs, they are able to do what they call networking. They are able to get other colleagues or other friends somewhere and they are able to share ideas. And then we also have trainings that we've organized for the SS, selected SMEs, most especially women. On his part, Chana Makpelo, chairman of the Greater Accra chapter of the Association of Ghana Industries, called for improved services to enhance the use of digital platforms. It's important for the telcos to take steps to ensure that at all times we have the best of the services in terms of the quality of the internet that we receive and also the quality of the service in terms of payment services and, and also being able to make place calls. As part of the MTN SME month, training sessions will be provided for SMEs. Here is Executive Director for SME Grow Africa. They're helping the businesses to understand, for example, when it comes to access to market, uh, it goes beyond just what we think it is. With their labeling, their understanding cross-border trade and transactions and all these things, a few other things we bring to this SME. Representative of Daddy Ash Limited, one of the participating SMEs, expressed optimism about the program. The softwares we use, they provide the solutions. So we are on time and that's the, the solution that it provides also is our ability to deal with our customers online, payment solutions. I, I, I can imagine what that year would have been without MTN. WO4 Business here. My name is Winston Taki. We'll be back with more news after this break. Stay tuned. Log on to myjoonline.com. My name is Faustina Sabo. Have a pleasant day as you enjoy the rest of our programs.